Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about Backrank Checkmate, what it is, why it's important, and we're gonna look at some more advanced tactics that are actually quite difficult, uh, and really talk about how this simple concept, when you mix it all together with a complicated chess position, it's actually quite difficult. So we're gonna talk about some of the key things that you wanna keep in mind, and how you should be practicing this to improve as a chess player. Let's go ahead and get started. So real quick, those of you who have the chess skills blueprint, this is number six, basic tactics at the very bottom, back rank mate. That's what this video is going to be all about to really give you a good idea of not just what back rank mate is, but how it gets more advanced as you, as you go along and improve. So even though this is under the basics tactics section, we are gonna get a little bit more advanced and it's gonna kind of tie in with some of the more intermediate and advanced tactics. Even though I do consider back rank mate by itself to be very straightforward, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so at the most basic level, this is how back rank mate might happen. You're playing as white, you see, oh, a free pawn, let me go take that, and then whoops, I forgot about my king and the game is just over, okay? This is, like I said, the most basic level, you'll see this at extremely low levels, lots of players will castle, forget about their king, do some other stuff, and next thing you know, the game is just over. But for a lot of us, we understand that that's what's going to happen, we can see that, and I think most people can do something like this, where you push a pawn up, it could be the G pawn, the F pawn, the H pawn, a lot of times the H pawn is a good idea, and it just gives your king some breathing room so that if the same situation happens again, well now it's on checkmate, the game goes on, your king can escape, and you know, you keep playing, right? So keep that in mind, but what I think a lot of people don't realize is that just because this is kind of the basic example that maybe you're taught when you first learn about back rank and mate, there are a lot of situations in chess that are much more complicated than this that people don't realize and they overlook that, hey, there's actually a back rank mate tactic available. It's just kind of mixed in with some other stuff going on in the game. So here's another position. It's black to play. What move you, should you play? This is uh, a moment for you to pause and think through. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move here is queen takes c6. So even though the rook is currently defended, it's actually not defended because if white did try to do that, look what we have, an open back rank, and guess what? We come in for the checkmate. So basically by taking the rook, you're just winning yourself a free rook, okay? So here's an example of, at first glance, you might say, oh no, my back rank is covered. I'm good, if white goes there, if black goes there, I'm just gonna take it if you're the white player, right? But upon further investigation, it's like, oh, actually, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm in trouble because I needed that rook to guard my rook. So you can see how there's kind of two different concepts that are combining together in this position. You've got the back rank mate threat, but you also have the attack on this rook, which is actually undefended because of that idea, right? So this is still a relatively simple example, but you can see how it's a little bit more involved. Okay, let's take a look at another one. All right, this position, it is white to play, and what move should you play here? Well, if you had a chance to look at that and you said queen to f8, you are correct. So it's a different type of back rank mate. We have to sacrifice the queen to lure black's rook back here, but once we do that, then we can follow up with our rook and it's game over, okay? So again, it's a back rank mate, it looks a little bit different. You know, we don't have the three pawns with the king sitting on g8, this time the king's in the corner and there's a random knight there. And we had to kind of see this idea of sacrificing our queen, but if we saw that, we won the game, right? And so another example of how there's a back rank mate, a back rank mate tactic that's kind of hidden in the position. Okay, let's look at another one. And these are kind of increasing in difficulty, so they should be getting more and more difficult as we go along. So it's black to play here. And what should you play if you're black? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is rook takes d4. It looks like the pawn's defended, but it's actually not defended. And we get a bonus that it's a fork on these two pieces. So white really has a lot of problems. First of all, like I said, if they take the rook, we come down and it's game over. They can delay a few times, but ultimately it ends in checkmate. And of course, if they don't take our rook, they have to figure out how they're dealing with both of these pieces which are being attacked at the same time and they can't really deal with it. So we win a piece, all right? So again, another example of looks like a relatively normal position. You might at first glance say, oh, it looks like there's no back rank 
make tactics because white is, is covered. I can't do anything, but you have to look a little bit deeper, a little bit further, and hopefully you can find rook takes d4 winning the piece because of the fork. Okay, so we're combining the back rank mate along with this, this fork idea. All right, let's look at another one. Again, if you'd like to pause white to play, what move should you play here? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, I hope you didn't say queen to d8 check because that is not quite checkmate. The knight's gonna take you. Yes, you can follow up with the rook, but the king is going to escape if you said that. So what you had to say was queen to d6 check first, which is going to force one of black's knights to block you. And then now that the knight is taking away the square from the king, now is when you can go queen d8 check. And after the trade, it is indeed checkmate. So a little bit more complicated there. You had to see that little kind of in-between move, queen to d6 check first, but then you can end up with the back rank mate. So again, another example of the first sort of obvious move, oh, queen d8 check, oh, it's not checkmate. The king's gonna escape. If that's all you thought about, you're not gonna solve this position. You're not gonna see the mate, right? You had to look a little bit further and, and see this idea of what if I lure the knight there then the king is trapped behind these pieces, and then I follow up with the, the sacrifice, right? Let's go to the next one. It is white to play. What move should you play here? All right, well, this one is a much more difficult one, in my opinion. It's only uh, mate in three, which isn't too bad, but when you really first look at it, it's like, okay, what? I mean, black looks totally safe. If I take the rook, they take me, back rank is defended. If I take the knight, they take me, back rank is defended. What in the world can I possibly do, right? The move here is queen to c4. And you're basically creating a checkmate threat on g8 that black can't really stop unless they take your queen. But if they take your queen, you have rook takes f8 now because you lured the rook away and there we go with the back rank mate. So the only other thing black could try to do would be like block your queen off somehow, like queen e6, but of course you can take it, or even better, you take it this way because of the pin, and you still have that checkmate threat coming and black can't stop it. So basically what it comes down to is this rook was stuck defending the back rank, which allowed you the option to play queen c4, even though you know normally you can't play a move like that. In this case, we can just ignore that rook and go for the checkmate. And it just turns out black has no way to, to deal with it. Right? So you can see again, how first glance, it's like, oh, there's not really a back rank mate tactic, but wait, actually there is. If you look further, I apologize if you hear screaming, I think my my uh, kids are having a moment. Uh, but anyway, um, super you know nice position. And how many of you would probably miss this move in a game? I mean, I'm honestly, when I first saw this, I, I, I knew it was a puzzle. So I'm a little biased. Like I found it because I knew it was a puzzle, but this is a kind of move that in a game, I, I honestly, I might've missed this, right? It's not an easy one to see, just moving your queen where a rook can take it. You gotta really think through what's the idea. So let's go ahead and jump to the next example. Okay, again, it is white to play. What move should you play here? All right, if you had a chance to do that, the move is queen to e8 check. And at first glance, it's like, well, the knight's just gonna take, we don't really have a follow-up. But you have to see this idea of bishop d5 check, which is going to force the king over, and then the rook can come down with the checkmate. So again, uh, taking advantage of the back rank, but you had to do it in kind of a weird way. You sacrifice the queen, which lures the knight out of the way. Then you bring the bishop, which pushes the king over. And finally, the rook comes down. So again, we see this combination, right, of all these different ideas that come together into a tactic, which wins you the game. But they all have that common theme of a back rank checkmate. Let's look at one more, or I think I actually have one or two more. Okay, here you go again. White to play. What move would you play here? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at this one, the move is rook to e8 check, which probably makes sense, right? Looking for a back rank mate. The idea here, though, is that black has a, a way to stop you, right? Bishop to d8 just stops that. So what do you need to do? Well, you follow it up now with rook takes uh, d8 check, forcing black to capture. And now you combine that with another tactical idea. I'll let you pause and think through if you've 
seen this one before. This is one of my favorites, so go ahead and pause and find the winning sequence from here for white. Well, if you had a chance to do that, uh, the move is knight to c7 check, setting up the smothered checkmate, right? And so here we go, double check with the knight and the queen. If the king moves this way, you simply deliver checkmate on c7, which forces it to go back in the corner. And if you've never seen smothered mate before, you're in for a treat. Queen to b8 check, the king can't take because the knight, and if the rook takes, the king is completely trapped. There we go with the smothered checkmate. So... This one, you know, was not really a back rank mate, but it had an idea of the back rank mate involved, right? And the idea was that, hey, it's almost back rank mate. It's going to force black to either move the rook, which is going to set up the smothered, or block with the bishop like we saw. But then I can, again, using that back rank mate, force the rook to leave the, the defense of the c7 square. My knight can come in and I can deliver the checkmate. And of course, you had to do this all with check because you're getting made it over here by black if you didn't right so again combining right the smothered mate and the back rank checkmate we can win this position so you're seeing a lot of these examples of combining multiple ideas okay and so just going back to my spreadsheet for a second the point that i want to make here was when you see these skills okay listed on this spreadsheet i don't want you to just think oh back rank mate yep i know what that is i'm good i'm done uh, moving on, this is super easy. I'm going to be a grandmaster in no time. Like, no, no, no. You need to understand that, okay, this is one piece of the puzzle, but when I'm playing a chess game, I have to at some point learn how to combine all of those together. A back rank mate with a smothered mate with, a, what do we have here? A pawn fork with a bishop pin with a rook pin. You got to learn how to combine all those together. That's really where, yes, it's important that you understand the, the individual skill. And yes, you need to take time to learn that. But at some point, the next level is gonna be putting that all together. All right, hopefully that made sense. Let's go back over here. All right, so here's the last puzzle I have for you guys. It's white to play and win. And this one is pretty tricky, but uh, go ahead, take a minute, pause, and try to figure this one out. All right, if you had a chance to look at that, um, I actually got this one wrong when I first looked at it because I forgot about the queen over here. I was going through some of these quickly and I thought in my head, I take here with check, we do this trade, and boom, checkmate, back rank mate, you know, I thought, that, I thought that's what it was. And I'm completely wrong, because what's going to happen after this? Black's not going to take with the rook, they're going to take with the queen. <laughs> and guess what? I just lost the game, right? So, um, no, like I said, I was doing it very quickly, but I did, I did miss that. So, the actual move that you needed to play was queen takes h7 check forcing the king out rook to h5 forcing the king back and the whole point was getting rid of the h7 pawn so that your knight can come into g6 and you actually have this amazing mating net with your knight and rook and the rook is coming down to the back rank to checkmate the king and black can't escape the king can't move because uh your knight and rook are stopping everything and there's no way for the king to escape uh, yes, you can delay the game by sacrificing your queen a little bit, and yes, you can move your rook to create an escape route, but at the end of the day, check, and then over here is mate regardless of, of what black does. So you, I guess you could argue that this really isn't a back rank mate. It's more of a, I don't know, something else, but you know, we kind of saw that idea of back rank mate here, and the reason I wanted to include it actually was because I sort of threw myself off by thinking that it was going to be a, a back rank mate over here when it actually was something else. So I just wanted to kind of show you how like complicated, sorry, how complicated these positions can get, right? And that's really what makes some of these strong grandmasters and people who are really, really good at tactics. Not only do they know all of the tactics, they know back rank mate, they know smothered mate, they know whatever the case may be, they know how to combine them and to really see when do they work and when do they not work. Right? Because if you're just like, oh yeah, back rank mate, here, let's do it. Right? Like I was. I just lost my queen because I didn't see a way to stop it. So don't forget, if you haven't gotten the chess skills blueprint, I'll put a link in the description. It's on my website. It's on sale currently. So check that out if you haven't already. But as always, thank you guys for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.